uh, this gentleman here, his name is uh, Stephen Wilson, Prison Ministries Campus Pastor at Gateway, okay? So, you know, this is a short uh, statement of him we can read. Stephen Wilson serves as the campus pastor for our prison ministries. Stephen and his team are committed to leaving the 99 and finding the one who needs to find love and hope through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The prison team works diligently to find ways to reach men and women behind walls of prison. Okay, so uh, that's him over there. I'm not going to read all of it, but that way you guys just get the, uh, uh, get the point. Okay, now there's this article, okay, talking about uh, Stephen Wilson. Uh, a convicted SO serving as prison ministry campus pastor at embattled Gateway Church. Okay, a Dallas area mega church whose pastor recently resigned amid the allegations of SA of a 12 year old girl employs a pastor who was convicted in 2004 of child S, according to Texas Department of Public Safety Records. Stephen Wilson, a convicted S, a, uh, is Prison Ministries Campus Pastor at Embattled Gateway Church. Last month, Gateway Pastor Robert Morris resigned after a woman came forward with allegations Morris had in 1982 to 1986 when she was 12 to 16 years old. In 2004, Wilson, a former middle school teacher, pleaded guilty to attempted indecency with uh, CH- a third degree felony. He was sentenced to two years in prison and required to register as S.O. for 10 years. He also forfeited his teacher's license. According to Gateway website, Wilson founded G3 Prison Ministry in 2008, a nonprofit determined to spread the word of God inside the walls of the prison system. In 2011, Gateway became official ministry partners with Wilson and G3, and in 2019, Gateway hired Wilson as campus pastor for prison ministries. I repeat, in 2019, Gateway hired Wilson as campus pastor, campus pastor for prison ministries. Lawrence Swissgood, a spokesperson for Gateway Church, did not respond to an email question about whether church leaders knew details about Wilson's guilty plea when they began working with his nonprofit or when they hired him. He also didn't respond to a question about whether Gateway leaders ever alerted the congregation of Wilson's past or status as a registered SO. He confessed his crime, was convicted of the crime, sent to prison, completed his sentence, went uh, uh went to i guess went to back to school and working on his doctorate degree swiss good stated in an email and i quote as a former inmate who paid his debt to society stephen is uniquely qualified to minister in these prisons and help inmates who are also seeking forgiveness seeking to connect with god and seeking to find meaning and purpose in their life even those who are are on death row, close quote. Swiss Good said Wilson was restricted to working only in the prison ministry and that Wilson has never worked around nor attended various student or children's events. Wilson, now 55, worked as a science teacher at North Richmond Middle School before he was arrested and charged with three counts of indecency in 2002. According to reports from the time in the Fort Worth Star Telegram, one Star Telegram reporter states that Wilson was accused of uh, touching 13-year-old uh, B, G, caused her to touch G. As part of his plea agreement, the charge was modified to attempted indecency with a child. Biographical information about Wilson on Gateway Church website previously stated what Wilson had Court Damascus Road, close quote. Experienced at age 33, 
This changed his life and led him to confess to a past crime that resided in him being sent to prison. The archive page stated Wilson was 33 at the time of his arrest for indecency with a child. Since June 18, Wilson's biographical information gateway site has been changed to remove the reference to Court Damascus Road cross court experience. Wilson's time in prison and his confession, which appears to be in question, now the website simply states that Wilson experienced a radical transformation that led him to submit his life to Christ. Wilson did not respond to requests for comment. Discrepancy in Wilson's account of arrest. In addition, in addition to the Gateway's archive website, Wilson also indicated on an appearance of the Point of View podcast in 2019 that he had confessed to his crime on the podcast. He stated that his conversion to Christ led him to confess a crime that nobody knows about and turn himself into the police. However, in 2002, column in the Fort Worth Star Telegram tells another story. According to it, the principal of North Richard, Richland Middle School claimed that fellow teachers report, reported concerns about Wilson's interactions with the female student to school administration over several months. The principal said he then alerted police of those concerns in April 2002. Wilson was arrested in July 2002. Uh, uh, the Royce report submitted a public information request for the, bro uh, for the probable cause affidavit connected to Wilson's arrest. The North Richland Hills Police Department, which arrested Wilson, closed the request after finding no responsive records related to the incident. In 2019 article in Outreach Magazine, doesn't say when Wilson came to Christ, but seems to imply it happened after his in incarceration. It quotes Wilson saying that he grew up in a Southern Baptist church and had had knowledge of the Bible, but had never submitted his life to Christ. It states that in prison, Wilson saw fellow inmates praying in a prayer circle and was profoundly impacted. It blew me, uh, and I quote, it blew me away. I never thought about those things happening in prison, Wilson told Outreach. And I quote, so I just said, okay, God, I get it. When I get out, I'm going to come back and reach those guys just like that. When asked about the discrepancies regarding Wilson's arrest and conversion, Swiss Good said he could not validate or confirm other media accounts. Other media accounts. So, uh, so we have, so like, you know, as you can see, that's a, that's a situation that we have with, um, uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen, uh, Wilson. Okay. Now I don't have any problem with anybody who used to have that lifestyle. They repented They we want them in the church because that's what the church is for. They are supposed to be part of the congregation, worshiping and be part of the congregation, right? There's no sin that is beyond redemption. There's no sin that is beyond redemption, okay? And what, uh, what to me that I see that is the problem, it's this thing over here, okay? Uh, Stephen Wilson is a prison ministry campus pastor, Okay? So he holds a title of a pastor. Because of what he did, he is disqualified to be a pastor. He can serve in the prison ministry. There's nothing wrong with that. He can, whatever name they want to give him, but not pastor. Okay? This is the problem that we have in churches. They want to redefine what pastor means. You cannot do that. Pastor, bishop, elder, and overseer. This is the same office. Per Festim of uh, 3 and uh, Titus 1. So if you want to give people the title of a pastor, and then you're saying like, oh, but they are not functioning as a pastor, you have it backwards, okay? Your mom is your mom, your dad is your dad, right? You're not calling your mom a dad. There's a reason why. So, Stephen Wilson, they could have just put over there, okay, he's a, I don't know, director of prison ministry, okay, uh, ministry outreach, whatever else they want to put, but don't put a pastor. Because if you, if you didn't know about this story, you meet them, you meet them, uh, Wilson uh, is a pastor, what do you hear? 
He's a prison minister. You can't pass past, right? That's why, like 11 good churches, they're not going to send anybody to a mission field as a missionary if that person cannot preach in their own church. So the same elders who are qualified to preach and teach in the church are the same elders who are qualified to preach and teach even in the mission field. So if they are sending a pastor to be a, a pastor in the prison ministry, they'll have no problem putting him on a pulpit because he's a pastor. He can preach. So he has qualification. He has all those things. But his, his story does disqualify him. The problem that we have, we equate giftedness with forgiveness. That doesn't mean that um, Stephen Wilson is not a Christian. That doesn't mean that he's not forgiven. That doesn't mean that he's not a believer. But that office, you have, it's an office, you have to hold that office above reproach. Above reproach. Stephen Wilson, given his story, he's not above reproach. Not only that, he lost a license, right? He can never be a teacher. So if this guy can never be a teacher, we are so good that we'll just be like, you know what, but you can be a pastor. Why? Why? So, you know, he, you know, he's a good member of the church. He's married. He has children. Praise God that God changed him, saved him. He redeemed him. All those things we say, yes, and amen. Yes, and hallelujah. But this is the problem. Like the same thing they're having in SBC, right? They have these women pastors. And what do they say? Like, oh, no, but they're not pastors, right? But no, but they have the title of a pastor. There's, it, it means something when you say somebody is a pastor. So we have, we cannot be redefining what it means to be a pastor by our own standards, right? Just like how they're redefining what marriage is. Like, no, no, no. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Whatever else people are doing, they can call it whatever else they want to call it, right? They do not get to define what God has set forth. God is the one who defines what an elder should be because it is the word of God, okay? So to me, I see like a gateway, they are putting themselves in jeopardy by, because like Stephen Wilson, his uh, profile just read, he's a, you know, uh, prison minister director. Who would have an issue with that if you're a genuine follower of Christ? You wouldn't. You'd be like, yes, praise God. You know what I mean? But they have over here Stephen Wilson as a campus pastor and given his history. Are you going to fault people when they come back? They say like, oh, by the way, they, at Gateway Church, they actually have somebody on staff as a campus pastor who is a registered he paid his dues. For sure he did. You see what I'm saying? So I, I found that to be like, man, you know, like, yeah, uh, it's not up to me. I'm like, okay, you know what? Just, just change the, just change the description over there. Cause when you say you are a pastor, there's a, it means something. There's a meaning to that issue. People who don't like sound doctrine, people who don't like good theology, they always have an issue when people are calling out false teachers. They always bring their story. Oh, do not judge. Stop judging, right? They always bring in an excuse. Instead of you being like, oh, wait a minute, these people are warning us. You see what I'm saying? Like the scripture, the, the three, uh, three quarters of uh, New Testament, what is it about? It's warning against what? Against false teachers. So if, it's, if the warning against false teachers is that paramount, who are we to keep quiet about it, right? So, uh, Jude, what does he say? I'm, I wanted to write to you about something, but he ended up switching, be like, no, 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 no. There's secret people who have crept in to spy in our liberty, okay? They're going to look like you, smell like you, talk like you, but they're sheeps in wolf clothing. So you got to watch out, right? Because you're not going to tell them. They're, they're going to sound good, sound good, okay? No more stuff <laughs> than you and I. The scripture says, like, no, we are to expose the deeds of, the, the of darkness. Oh, thank you, Juanita. <laughs> Crunch, thank you. Okay. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. They are ravenous wolves. Right. So people who are not happy when you're warning them about the wolves, that's the problem. That is the problem. Unless if we're saying lies. But does the Bible talk about uh, qualifications of the pastor? Does it talk about that? Does he talk about uh, what he must be? The character of the pastor, does he talk about? Are we supposed to adhere that? Or do we get to do whatever else we want? Help me out here. Help me out here. Okay, we already have here Philippians, uh, Philippians 1, 9. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ 
to the glory and praise of God. How are you going to have discernment if you don't know the word of God? Help me out here. 